All right, everyone, so today I'm going to do a reading from uh, The Gateless Gate, uh, the classic book of Zen koans. And um, this is a very uh, popular Zen classic. And um, this particular edition is by Koan Yamada. Um, and I will, of course, include the specifics in the, uh, in the description below, but I just wanted to give you a picture of the book. But um, the one koan I'm going to read is on page 23. And um, it's short, like a lot of these koans, but it has a lot of meaning. Um, the case. Whatever he was asked about Zen, Master Guntai simply stuck up one finger. He had a boy attendant whom a visitor asked, What kind of teaching does your master give? The boy held up one finger too. Hearing of this, Guntai cut off the boy's finger with a knife. As the boy ran away screaming with pain, Guntai called him. When the boy turned his head, Guntai stuck up one finger. The boy was suddenly, suddenly enlightened. When Guntai was about to die, he said to the assembled monks, I received this one finger Zen from Tenru, which is, of course, the boy. I've used it as, all my life, but I have not exhausted it. Having said this, he entered Nirvana. Now, this is obviously a, a symbolic story. I, I sincerely doubt that Guntai cut off um, Tenryu's finger. Um, I hope I'm pronouncing these names right. Probably not, but I'm doing my best. <laughs> uh, I sincerely doubt that the Zen master cut off the boy's finger for sticking up his finger after seeing his master do it when asked uh, about enlightenment. Now, what this story symbolizes to me just, you know, and these stories are supposed to be thought on and meditated on over years. I mean, even a short story like this meditated on for like a year uh, on a regular basis. Um, but... If I may just give a brief analysis of it, just reading it for uh, the first time in a while. Um, I think that this represents uh, the relationship a master and a student has. Now, um, the master is someone who, you know, dispenses teachings. And the students take up that teaching and dispense it as well. But in teaching, the master actually gains something back. The, the, the master actually experiences enlightenment by sharing it with students and students give that enlightenment back just by receiving uh, the teaching and um, then the zoo and not to speak of the Zen students passing on to uh, further generations and becoming the masters themselves but there is an exchange happening between masters and students uh, an exchange of of more than just knowledge but um, a kind of vibration that is sent out into the world. When a master and a student exchange uh, knowledge, uh, when there is, there is this uh, communication on more than just a verbal level, but on a, uh, on a very um, internal level, a very spiritual level, a very, um, uh, a very level that has to do with everyone's spirit, not just the spirits of those two people, but everyone's uh, in, innate nature, everyone's innate uh, need to be enlightened. And when there is there's a vibration of that teaching sent out by this kind of exchange, um, not necessarily by the literal cutting off a finger, but by the exchange of knowledge, um, one giving and one receiving, then there is, there is a perpetuation of uh, the, the environment of understanding emptiness. Um, throughout the world, when knowledge is shared, uh, the, the environment is affected. Um, and I'm talking about the, the, the environment of consciousness that we can't necessarily see, but we all feel. We all have a united consciousness. And when these waves are sent out, um, when, when the exchange is understood uh, on such a level that enlightenment exists between these two people, then emptiness is understood by everyone a little bit more all around the world. And this is... This is a this is a understanding that I just came up with on the spot, just reading this again after a while. But I feel that the exchange in and of itself had is is the meaning of this story. That that the master actually received something just as valuable as what he was giving to the students, and that this actually uh, perpetuates everyone's potential to reach nirvana. But um, hey, this is going to be the end of the video. Thank you very much for watching. And uh, I will read future koans. Uh, or I will read koans in the future. <laughs> All the koans right here are, are very old. But um, hey, if you, uh, if you enjoyed this video, hit that thumbs up down there. If you want to comment, ask a question, or uh, 
or dispute me as far as my interpretation, feel free to shoot it down there in the comment section. But um, I will see you in the future.